Here, Joe Biden was sworn in as president, promising a more humane immigration system, is the same year that an all-time record 1.7 million migrants have been detained at the southern border. Is that a coincidence? Thanks. So, um, thanks for the question, Peter. Um, first, I'll say that DHS will formally release its uh, monthly September operational update uh, sometime soon. So I'm not going to go into uh, get ahead of that or go into the numbers. I think that's what you're you're mentioning uh, right now. But secondly, you know, I would add, and you hear us talk about this all the time. We continue to enforce uh, Title 42 uh, and uh, expel single adults and families when possible. And we continue to be very, very clear that no one should attempt uh, to irregularly. Uh, migrate here or enter the United States. So it's unsafe, it's unlawful, it's a public health risk, which is why we're using Title 42, because it's not our immigration policy, it's a public health authority. And so those attempting attempting uh, to, to come in irregularly, migrate irregularly, will be subjected to border restriction, including uh, Title 42, as I just mentioned. And you're telling people not to come. That's been the line for a couple months. It's been very well documented that a lot of these migrants are just released with a notice to appear or a notice to report, and that something close to 80% don't appear or report. So do officials around here consider that that could be something that is attractive to migrants who figure, if I can just get in, I can stay? Again, I'm not going to get into the numbers because I know that uh, you're leaning into the numbers and asking me these questions. But look, we've been very clear, and we've been clear for the last 10 months. Uh, again, the CDC has determined that the continued expulsion of certain individuals under Title 42 is necessary due to the risk of transmission and, sp and spread of COVID-19 in, congr in congregate settings, such as CBP stations, as well as the threat from emerging variants. So if it's not possible, which is what I think you are uh, uh, alluding to there. Uh, there is an exception if we have operational capacity constraints, including the makeup of the specific family unit and agreements with the country of origin or last residence. Another determining factor is detention capacity, both within ICE and CBP. There is also an extension for acute humanitarian need, such as the urgent medical situation. There is an exception on the Convention Against Torture if someone makes a legitimate claim that they would suffer torture if they've, re they've returned to the country from which they have come. As we have stated, those who cannot be expelled are placed into immigration proceedings. But, as to be clear, we are still expelling, uh, expel expelling single adults and families uh, when possible using Title 42. That remains the policy. That has not changed. And a follow-up about something that you just said. I you guys say that President Biden does not want to raise taxes on anyone making less than $400,000 a year. But there's a new Fox poll that finds 83% of registered voters are noticing bills for groceries and everyday items increasing. So how is that any different than a new tax? Well, look, and when you say... Can you give me a little bit more? Like, what's the? Well, the supply chain is all backed up. There are bottlenecks, empty shelves, prices going up. People are paying more, and so how is that any different than a new tax? So I, I would say this. Um, you know, we are we are dealing with a historic and evolving uh, pandemic that is impacting our economy. Right? We have seen it for the past year and a half. That's what people have been dealing with, and uh, it is it is having an outsized impact on our global supply chain. And the president understands how much a, a squeeze it is uh, for when uh, families see their prices rise. And so he understands that, and that's why he's we've been using every tool in our tool belt to make sure uh, that uh, we deal with that in a in a real way, so that people understand that the president is doing everything that he can uh, to deal. To to deal with those issues. So there's a couple of things. Um, so we got to think about the, the progress that we've made on how far we've come for the, for the, for the mess that we inherited from the previous president. Uh, we, we've already averaged 600,000 jobs, which I mentioned at the top. At my, at the top. Uh, those are jobs per month uh, compared to just 60,000 before we came in. That's almost 5 million 
total in eight months. We've increased economic growth projection for 2021 and more than have, than have new unemployment claims. So we are in a different place than where we were before the president uh, came, into, came into office. And so we're going to continue uh, building on basically the American Rescue Plan. This is why we're trying to, to pass the president's domestic economic policies. And to that point, uh, the majority leader or the minority leader in the House, Kevin McCarthy, wrote a letter to the president. He says we must address the global supply chain and ports crisis before Congress even considers additional social spending and taxation legislation. Is that something that you would consider? So here's the thing. Uh, Jen responded to this is the letter, the letter from McCarthy. Mm -hmm. Is that we're talking about? OK, yeah. Wonderful letter. Um, uh, so she responded to this earlier, um, and uh, let me just add to this a little bit. It's a, I, I've already kind of talked about this, but there's a little bit more that I want to lean into. So under the Trump-McCarthy economy, uh, this time last year, fewer Americans were working, which is what I was just saying. Uh, job growth was flattening, and families were facing down a dark winter with less economic security than ever before and a pandemic raging out of control. That was the holiday season under the McCarthy Trump uh, uh, holiday uh, season. So that's something to remember. This was a different time a year ago. And so fast forward a year a year from there from then, uh, nearly 80% adults are vaccinated. We created 5 million jobs. Uh, Americans have money in their pockets and they're spending it, resulting in record volume of good goods through our ports and our roads and rails. Kevin McCarthy and his caucus voted against that bill that made that happen. They did did not do anything to help the American public when we needed them, so, when the American public needed it. And I'm talking so about the American I, Rescue Plan, I, to be clear, which has helped, which has helped turn on the economy, which has helped, as I said, make sure that people are getting vaccinated to protect their lives yes, and, and so go back to work. Last one. Are you saying that you th as you compare holiday season this year to holiday season last year, are you saying that if Christmas gifts don't get delivered this year because the supply chain is backed up because of bottlenecks that people are going to blame Donald Trump or are they going to blame Joe Biden? That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that we're in a different place than we were a year ago. And the reason why is because the president took action. The reason why is Democrats came together and they passed the American Rescue Plan, put put checks into pockets, made sure that uh, that we were dealing with the issues that uh, pushed women out of the workforce, which is the child tax credit, child care, all of those things that really benefited everyday people who were being left behind. Now what we're doing is we're making sure that we continue the investment, right? The bill back better agenda, BIF, the bipartisan infrastructure bill, which 19 uh, Republican senators voted for, uh, those two pieces of legislation, that is, the, that is the president's plan on how do we actually build back better and not leave anyone behind and do that economic growth for, for, the, for the middle class. And so that's what we're talking about and that's what we're continue to do. For the supply chain, the president is doing everything that he can. He is bringing in the private sector. He's brought in the labor. When we talk about the meeting that he did last week for the ports, right, we're talking about Long Beach and uh, the Los Angeles ports. And that's what we, that's, that's one of the things that we can do as a government is uh, do it in good faith, bring everybody together and figure out how to fix uh, the short term problem that we're having. So that, and we've been working on this since the president walked into, walked into the White House.